Denise, you will need to unmute your mic, please. Good evening. Welcome to Lincoln Mystery Plays Preview. My name is Denise Christison and I am chair of Lincoln Mystery Plays Trust. Um, we've been around since about the 60s, starting off in 1968 at the Theatre Royal in Lincoln and starting every four years from 1978. And uh, from then we have been all over the world as well as our home at Lincoln Cathedral. It would have been our last night tonight and with regret, of course, we had to cancel. So instead, we're giving you a little taster of hopefully what will be next year in late summer. The dates will be the 16th of August to the 5th of September. Venues will be Lincoln, Louth, Heckington, Horncastle and Gainsborough. You'll be able to find the information for this on the website, Facebook and Twitter, um, most likely autumn time when we have confirmed the dates. Also, if you would like to take part in the production, we will be looking at rehearsals and auditions around mid spring time. And we welcome you to join us. Again, you'll be able to find out more information on our website, Lincoln Mystery Plays, on our Twitter, and also on Facebook. The Lincoln Mystery Plays Board would like to thank all of the performers and especially our director, Tom. I hope you have a lovely evening. Enjoy and thank you. Take care and keep safe. I am first and last, beginning and end. My name you know, God and King. My work now I'll make. Now will I send from myself the rule of my reigning. I have no beginning nor no end. And all that ever shall have being, it is kept close in my mind. All tales shall be told through me. First, I bring forth my angels full bright in mirth and joy evermore to dwell. To whose worship sing you this song? To worship God or reverence me? We worship God of myth so strong who has formed both us and thee. A lovelier Lord in truth am I, and greater than he will ever be. I shall go sit in God's seat on high and prove that I am more worthy. Above sun and moon and stars in the sky, I am now set. As you may see, <laughs> Now, worship me as most mighty, and for your Lord, love me. <laughs> God's myth we forsake, and fall down at thy feet. Thou, oh, Lucifer, for thy nickel pride, I bid thee fall from heaven to hell. And all those that clutch close by thy side in my bliss, never more to dwell. Thy bidding, thy will I work, in hell's dungeon my den is sought, for fear of fire, a fart I crack, <laughs> and endless pain I shall be caught. Now, let us show and tell together what things I have wrought. Here shall be seen 
the first day and the first night. The second day, water I make and sky above made fair and bright. The third day, I part water from earth. Now grow tree and each green thing. And on the fourth day, I shall call forth sun and moon and stars also. The fifth day, fish that swim and go, birds and beasts, both wild and tame. The sixth day, my true work I now know and make man, Adam by name. In earthly paradise without woe, I grant thee abundance, unless thou do blame. Blessed thy flesh with bone of thy bone, Adam, here is thy wife and mate. Feast fish and fowl that swim and go to every one of them a name thou must make ah thy wife give her a name also eve good now eve and adam to paradise there you shall have all manner of things both flesh and fish and fruit of price, all shall obey your least bidding. Here is pepper and then peonies and sweet licorice. Take them all to thy liking, both apple and pear and gentle rice. But touch not this tree of cunning. All things Save this, for thee is God. Yet not eat not this fruit, and me displease, for then thou die. Death slips his knot. Now, have I made all things from naught, heaven and earth, man and beast, to all things that my hand hath wrought. I grant my blessing to ever increase. From working, I, I will this seventh day cease. Likewise, the seventh day give work no thought. Adam, Eve, be prince in my place, whilst to heaven I speed my way. Holy Father, blessed thou be for all this wealth you've given me. Every fruit will richly name and gather with glee and game. Let's taste the fruits of great plenty that grow in paradise. Now, fair wife and lovely dame, this fruit is best, I can thee tell. If the apple I eat, I were to blame, from joy our Lord was soon expel. Of this apple, if you will bite, even as God is, so shall you be. Take this apple in thy hand, and with thy spouse, bite it, and be without care. <laughs> All God's wisdom you'll soon share. As wise as God is, can it be? And God's peer of might. My lovely spouse and good husband, 
Listen to me, sir, I pray. Take this fair apple in thy hand and take a little bite and say. If we eat it, ourselves we kill. And God told us we shall be dead. A fair angel told me this tale. To eat that apple, apple, fear not a lick. As cunning as God on heaven's hill, thou shalt soon be within a tick. Therefore this fruit will eat. Is all God's wisdom captured here? Then I'll soon taste this sweet. Man, beasts and birds, wild and tame, when I pass over their presence, shall them kill. Herbs, grass and trees strong, I take them all the same, even, even the great mighty oaks my side. I... That ever that speech was spoken, that, that false angel lied to me. Alas, that our maker's bidding is broken, for I have touched his own dear friend. Some leaves I shall quickly hunt to shield us from death's prick. Woman, cover up thy front, and I shall hide my urn. Uh... Adam, where hast thou gone? Ah, Lord, for sins our flowers fade. I hear thy voice, but see thee not. One tree, just one tree I kept for my own. Life and death was in that tree. The woman that thou made for me, she brought me low to moan and to groan. Woman, that are this man's wife. Have thou stirred up this strife? I made thee a great lady in paradise to always play. Lord, when thou went from this place, came a worm with an angel's face. I did his bidding. Alas, alas, now we are both bound by death's grasp. <laughs> thou worm, with thy ill will's work, thy felts fables they are full thick why have thou put death's prick in adam and his wife i am full of great envy of wrath and wicked hate that they should live above the sky where long before i dwelled on high and now i am cast in hell sty too long for heaven's gate adam, since thou that apple gnawed and my soul bidding all ignored, go toil and trudge with sorrow and sweat until thy life's end. Woman, thou sought this sinning and bade him break my bidding. Therefore thou shalt be underling to man's bidding bend. Till thou a maiden, till through a maiden hope is born, then thou wicked worm full of pride through her thy head shall be torn now thy belly thou shall glide at thy bidding foul i fall i creep home to my stinking school with a fart a breach i break when from paradise we were brought our weeping never grew stale our short pleasures have been long bought. Father, no more tell that tale, for I, Abel, would know what to do, serve thy God to his pleasing. And yet I, Cain, hold it but vanity, to listen to God speaking, for I have good enough plenty. God, you must love and dread, and what goods God has you turned? The first fruit offered as a sacrifice, burned. Accept this lamb, blessed Lord, I pray. My gift is but simple, yet the best I may. To tithe the best, 
That is not sound. And keep the worst. Is that your boast? <laughs> but I more wisely shall turn this round and tithe the worst and make no boast. Here, I tithe a tattered sheath. Let God take it or else leave. Now, Cain, brother, thou dost fall ill, for God sent thee both best and worst. <laughs> but keep myself the worst. God will never eat nor drink, <laughs> you stupid sheep. You likewise stink. Now, shut up or you'll hear my curse. I give to God that sits above, on whom is set my whole heart's love. <laughs> ah, hark, Abel. <laughs> what blaze is this? Thy tithing turns as fire full bright. Of the best is my tithing, and of the worst is your offering. <laughs> what? Thou stinking loser, is that what you say? Thou shall be dead, I shall hear thee slay. Mercy! <laughs> Ooh. With this branch, I'll hide him. Cain, come forth and answer me. Tell your tale entirely true, thy brother, Abel. Where is he? Um. Since when was I my brother's keeper? <laughs> I cannot tell where he might be. <laughs> He's always been a hearty sleeper. <laughs> Cursed Cain, thou art untrue. And for thy deed thou shalt sore rue. Thy brother's blood thou hast mercilessly slew. Mercy! <laughs> but for Adam's love, and Eve strain, if any thou shalt slay, they shall have sevenfold more pain and suffer by both night and day. <laughs> now will I go and wend my way to find wherever best I may, ah, from man's sight to hide my curse on you all with every side. Next tale of Noah shall be. A God was wroth with man unsound, because from sin man did not flee. God of his goodness and grace profound, by whose glorious power all things are wrought, thy servants save, Lord, from sinful sound. Now may no man go about, but see sin reign in every rout. Cursedness does spring and sound and spread. I am your wife, your children these be. And to us too it does belong them to teach in every degree to forsake sin and all work wrong. So our God to please. Alas, now I see not, for I am old and blind. Great mourning I make, and great cause, no doubt. When I had sight, you might never once find my peer of poaching in all this world about. When I was bound to pray, and this be famous Lincolnshire, for well I served my mars there for more than seven years. Till he took up with poaching as usual quickly here. Oh, it is my delight to shine it at the season of the year. <laughs> it is true, Master, what you say indeed. Your target you'd prick at half a mile at speed. Oh, I still reckon no man could shoot better than I should do now if, if my hand was set right. Spy me some prey, boy. Under yon grey bush, master, a beast do I see. Draw up thy bow, thou beast to slay. Oh, oh, ah, ah, out, out, alas, my heart is asunder. Oh, with a broad arrow, I am dead and slain. Ah, oh. oh no, it's Cain thou killed, I tell thee plain. Have I slain Cain? Oh, alas, what have I done? 
Upon all my blood, God will revenge this deed. Thou art the reason I slay thee, the son. Therefore, I shall kill thee. Ugh. How, how the agony, how the pain. Now, I am sorry that I have made man that slays my handiwork and grieves me so. With their sin, their death they brew. No, no, a ship thou thou make, of every kind of beast a couple thou take, within the shipboard their lives to win. For I am sore grieved with these for their sin, that all this wide world shall be drowned with a flood. With doleful heart sighing, sad and sore, great moaning I make for this dreadful flood. Man and beast are drowned many a score, for they would world would not end its spilling of blood. Rustiness of sin, the cause of this tide. Yeah. We are now saved. It's life to abide. Now, God has ceased this 40 days reign. This crow I shall send out onto some plain. This crow on some fowl can and set. Therefore, a new messenger I shall send forth. Fly forth, fair dove, onto waters wet, and spy on some dry land, thy morning to end. A great olive bush this dove does bring, for a joy of this broken, right heartly we sing. Enough. Fresh flesh and blood, my word shall be born, and from death's grip you each shall be torn. This is the tree of Jesse's root. Out of that branch in Nazareth a flower shall bloom of this tree, the which, by grace, shall destroy death and bring mankind to bliss full free. Behold, a virgin will conceive and bear a son named Emmanuel. To save your lives, we shall suffer death and buy you bliss in heaven for to dwell. Blessed be our Lord, fair fruit have we now. We made to God a holy vow that our first child, the servant of God should be. Mary, will you tell them here your answer to me? Will ye be pure maiden and God's wife? You have made your vow, so truly will I, to be God's chest foot maid, while life is in me. But to be God's wife, I, I was never worthy. <sighs> now, now then, daughter, that was well said. Your answer as if you were 20 years old. <laughs> Sweet daughter Mary, think on your mother Anne. Your leaving smites my heart deep. Father and mother, I shall pray for you and weep to God with all my heart, especially. Come, good Mary, come, as I call. Fifteen steps of pilgrimage thou must ascend, and as you do, the pilgrim songs extol. It's a miracle if thou manages. Now, what defend?
gracious Lord, this is a marvelous thing that we have seen here by this sight. A babe of three years old, so young. Come up these steps, so upright. It is a high miracle. Holy Father, I beseech you forthright. Say how I shall be ruled in God's house. God loved you first, love him in return, for of love in his own likeness he made thee. Then love thy neighbour as thyself without end. Thou shalt hate nothing but the devil and sin. God bids thee love thy enemy. And as for yourself here, thus shall you begin. You must serve and worship God here daily. This life I love as my own life. Now, sovereigns, here have you seen in the temple my presentation. And I beseech you of my patience that we pass these matters so lightly away if they should be done with good providence. Each one would suffice for a whole day. Now, Mary, child to the law, you must listen and choose thee a spouse to be thy love. Ere I was born, ye made me trust because my parents had no child in God's temple to serve evermore. They promised their first child should dwell. In law all should wedded be, yet to break a vow to God would be dreadful. This answer greatly troubles me. Together to God, now pray we, knowledge in this to send us. Pretend and understand, this is God's own bidding, that all kinsmen of David the king to the temple shall bring an offering. With white branches in their hand, take heed whose branch sees flowers spring, for he shall be the maiden's match. It shall be done. All manner of men, we attend, that are descended from David the king. The temple, come, your offering, a fair white branch, each one of you must bring. There. You hear me? Speak up, young lad. Did you not hear the bishop, old man? Every lad of David's kin where the branch shall come stand. Every lad? Then I've no need to worry. I pray your friends. Get on your way. There is a merry maid whose name is called Mary, and one of us to marry, they'll marry. Marry me to marry Mary? I'll swiftly rule out me. I've ever been a bachelor and evermore will be. I've changed not a jot for all my long life. It would be a strange thing now to take a young wife. Come on, granddad, let's go! I am old and also cold. Walking does me woe. Now, I wish I were at home in my cot. I'm ashamed to be seen, truly. A dead stick bears flowers free. A gracious God on heaven's throne. Joseph. In heart, blithe with glee, 
a maid to wed thou hast won. What? Should I wed? God forbid. An old man may never thrive with a young wife. So God me save. Nay, nay, sir. Let, 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 let me be. Our Lord God wills that it shall be. Uh, 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 against my God, I, I, I cannot say nay. Uh, uh, then warden and keeper will I ever be. But fair maiden, I thee pray, keep thee chaste as I shall me. And I am a man of age. Therefore, Sir Bishop, I will that ye see that in bed we shall never meet. Maria, will you have this man and keep to him all your life? I shall him never forsake, but ever with him abide. And gentle spouse, as ye have said, let me live as a clean maid. Joseph, with this ring now wed thy wife. And by her hand thou now her catch. He blesses you that has no ending. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sanctus. From us, good angel Gabriel, thou shall I send into the country of Galilee to hail from me a maiden free for Mary, that all shall amend. Say that she is without woe and full of grace, and that I, the son of the Godhead, of her shall be born. And if she ask thee how it might be, tell her I, the Holy Ghost, shall work all this. It shall be done with a thought. Ave Maria full of grace, God is with thee. Among all women, blessed art thou. The fallen Eva is turned Ava. So among all women, blessed art thou. Ah, mercy God, this is a marvelous hearing. Yet your angel's words trouble me here. Angels daily to me do appear, but not in the likeness of man, I fear. Mary, in this have no dread, for from God grace has found ye. You shall conceive in your womb indeed a child, the son of the Trinity. Hey, angel, I say to you, in what manner of way shall this be? For knowing of man I have none now. I have evermore kept my virginity, but I doubt not the words ye have said to me, but I ask how it shall be done. The Holy Ghost shall come from above to thee, and the virtue of him highest shall shadow thee so. Thy answer all desire to hear, and thy consent to God's incarnation. With all meekness, I agree to this accord. I cannot tell what joy, what bliss now I feel through God's word. By the Holy Ghost with joy, God's son to us has come. To all that dread him, now is he come. All the poor and needy he fulfills with his goods and the proud he fells to the void. How dame, how? Undo your door! Undo! Are ye at home? Why speak you now? Husband, right graciously, now come ye be. It solaces me sore, truly, to see you in sight. Sweet words mask bitter taste, I am afraid. Thy womb too high does stand. I dread me sore, I am betrayed. Some other man has had the in hand. The father of heaven and yours it is. Other fathers has he none? 
This child is God's and yours. God's child? You lie in faith. God did never jape so with a maid. And I came never there, I dare well say. So again I say, Mary, whose child is it? God's and yours. Now, now, all old men to me attend and wed no wife with wandering eyes. The angel thus said, said he. An angel? Alas, alas, fie for shame. Ye sin now in what ye say. To put an angel in so great blame? Oh, gracious God in heaven's throne, correct my spouse in this hard case. To the bishop I will it tell, that he, the law, may to thee come with stones thou to kill. <laughs> nay, nay. Yet God forbid that I should do that dreadful deed. Joseph, Joseph, thou weep shrill. Good sir, let me weep my fill. Go forth thy way and let me alone. I tell thee, God of thy wife shall be born of her clean made as she was before, to save mankind that is forlorn. Therefore, go cheer her, I say. I might well have known. So good a creature as she would never have done trespass. Oh, mercy, mercy, my gentle match, mercy. I have said all amiss. All that I have said here, I, I forsake. Your sweet feet, now let me kiss. <laughs> Nay, let my cheek feet be, not those you take. My cheek ye may kiss. <laughs> it was the work of God, as I told you. Now blessed be that Lord so provided for me. Hark! Hey, Slanta, what can you tell of any new gossip round about? Backbiter, my sister of blood, a short while ago, a thing befell. I know you'll laugh right well to hear this riot. If this be sown, much woe shall grow. Oh, if you'll raise it to my ears, I shall not spare seed to sow. Sister, in the temple a maid there was called Maid Mary, the truth to tell. She made a vow with man never to mingle, but to live a chaste and clean virgin. That vow she broke, <laughs> her belly does swell and is as great as yours or mine. Oh, that old shrew Joseph, my truth I plight, was so enamoured by that maid that when of her beauty he had her sight, he ceased not till he'd her way laid. Ay, nay, nay, well worse she has him paid. Some fresh young gallant she loved much more that his bold legs between her have laid <laughs> and that does grieve the old man sore. <laughs> oh, you gossips. Why speak you such shame of that good virgin, fair maid Mary? Oh, shame on you, for your kin she be. All great with child her womb does swell. Call her here, and yourself shall see that she... This is the truth that I hear tell. Now, Joseph, okay, and thy fair spouse. Some beggars told that in your house a cuckold's bow each night is bent. Fair maid, that tale you best can tell. Did not that archer please you right well? <laughs> and you'll see by her belly's swell. 
rock a baby, she'll soon sing. <laughs> Alas, Mary, what is this singing? Of God in heaven, I take witness that sinful deed was never my thought. Almighty God shall be our friends when the truth is tried out. Now then, Joseph, I am afraid that you have done this wicked sin. Oh, die my truth, you hit the pin. Spill all. Tell us how you heard it when, or acknowledge yourself a cuckold. <laughs> she is to me a true, clean maid. And I, to her, am true also. Thou <laughs> shalt not escape from us so. Thus thou shalt give us another play. Here is the bottle of God's vengeance. This drink shall be now thy purgation. This has such virtue by God's ordinance that whoever drinks of this potion here in this place, this altar about, if they be guilty, some pollution, pain in their face, shall show it out. This drink I take with meek intent as I am guiltless to God. I pray, Lord, as thou art omnipotent on me, thou show the truth this day. If I be worthy to suffer blame, O rightful God, my sin show out. <laughs> Joseph, with heart, thank God thy Lord, whose high mercy does thee excuse. But Mary, with child we see thee stand. What type of man did you misuse? I trespass never with earthly lad. <laughs> In face, I suppose this maiden slept shivering outdoors while it did snow. <laughs> and a snowflake into her mouth crept, and from it the child in her womb did grow. <laughs> oh, dear son, I pray you help your mother mild. Help me now that my innocent is not lost. Almighty God, how is this set? This woman with child is fair and clean, without foul spot, immaculate. By my father's soul, here is a great guile, because she is one of your kindred. You change the drink by some false wile. Yes. For all these people, think thou the same. Now, good Lord of heaven omnipotent, by your great mercy, his sickness assuage. Oh, blessed Virgin, we thank you all for your heart and great patience. We will all to you lowly incline and take our leave of your worthy presence. Now, my wife Mary, what say ye to this? Octavian, our emperor, sadly has declared, I'll tribute him to bear. My folk must trudge to the city of Bedlam, far hence from here. My husband and my spouse, with you will I wend. A sight of that city, soon would I see. It would bring great joy to me. My spouse, you're with child. I fear you to carry her, for I reckon it were works wilder. For you to please, 
right keen am I for women grudge easy when they are with child? Ah, my sweet husband, would you tell me what tree is standing upon that hill? Uh, now then, Mary, it is called a cherry tree. In summer, you might eat your fill. Those cherries I would happily take, if it please you to labour so little for me. To fulfil your desire, I shall do surely. But to put you these cherries, it's a work wild. For the tree is so high that I cannot climb lightly. Let him pluck you the cherries who gave you that child. Now, good Lord, I pray thee, grant me this boon to have these cherries, if it be your will. Thank you. Ow! Ow! I know well. I have offended my God in Trinity. Speaking to my spouse these unkind words. This city is beset with people everywhere. They, they lie full weary even in the street. Our sweet wife. What shall we do? Where Good husband. shall we launch this night? Good husband, there's a house of horse over the way. Among the beasts will be our hostel. God be thy help, spouse. It pains me sore. God's son among beasts to be born in a house so desolate without any war. Joseph, my husband. Abide here I shall, for here will be born the king's son of bliss. Therefore, husband, for your honesty, get you hence out of this place, and I alone, with humility, here shall abide for God's grace. Wife, I'm, I'm ready you to please. I will get out of your way um, and seek some midwives to give you ease. God in heaven for you, I pray. Now, God from whom comes all relief, and as all grace in thee is sound, so save my wife <coughs> from hurt and grief until some midwives for her I have found. Why do you make such great mourning? Tell me. Why you make such a great moan? My wife is now in labour, alone. If you midwives can do any good, help my young spouse in haste. Anon. Be of good cheer and of glad mood. My name is Salome. All bedlam bairns I know, for I'm a midwife of worthy fame. And I am Zelami. Mothers know my name. We two with thee shall go today. But we dare not enter this lodge. In faith, there is within such a great brightness. Moon by night nor sun by day shone never so clear in their lightness. Without labour? A child she's had here. Labour? She must have endured, or else no child was born. All hail, Mary, and right good morn. Who was midwife of this fair child? Why do you... Why do you laugh, wife? If ye have need of midwives from a fence, they will go hence. Husband, I pray you, displease you not. Though that I laugh and great joy you have, here is the child 
the world has wrought, born now of me, that all things shall save. This hand let me touch and feel. If you have need of medicine, I show you comfort and help will rise. As other women, if you have pain. Of this fair birth that here is mine, pain nor grieving feel I rightly none. This child that is born will set his people free through me, clean maid, and therefore I smile. I ask you, Grace, for I did rave. Oh, gracious child, I ask mercy, as thou art Lord and I art knave. Forgive me now my great folly. It is not true. It may never be, but both be clean, it cannot be said. I shall never trust it without proof. She is a child, and is a maid. <laughs> alas, alas, and woe this day, for my great doubt of false belief, my hand is dead. Try as clay. Woman, thy sorrow to be delayed, worship that child that here is born. Touch the cloths in which he is laid, for he shall save all that is torn. Now, blessed be this child evermore, the Son of God, for in truth he is, has healed my hand that was forlorn through false belief and doubt and this. As God's good news to all who hear, my child is soul for every sore. Farewell, good dames, and God be your speed. On this day of our joy, angels did sing and told the shepherds this morn of the blissful birth of this king. In good time came kings three, with gold, myrrh and frankincense. A star led them their way. Hail, king cold clad, one said. Hail, with maiden's milk succurred. He came to my child with gold clad and, and knew him for his lord. Another knelt upon his knee. Sweet incense I offer up to thee. Thou shalt be the first of high degree, none so mickle of might. Yet the third, bitter myrrh to him he sent, for on the bitter tree my bairns shall be bent, man and God omnipotent. With bitter beating his flesh shall be rent, till all his blood be bled, such a sorrow both sharp and smart, that as a sword pierce it shall, even through his mother's heart. Therefore, to Egypt we must go, for jealous Herod his soldiers shall send. He will never suffer his knees to bend. To this king of kings, born low. Behold your lord of royalty so rich, and ruler of all realms in regal array. I am the comeliest of kings, clad in glittering gold, I wield at my will all men of the wolf, and am worthily wrapped in a wonderful way. You minstrels of mirth, blow up a good blast while I go to my chamber and change my array. The greedy devil shall groan gracefully as a grouse when that bairn wins this world with his wide wounds. To love that child is my delight. Oh, what are you blubbering? A kingly bairn born amongst be so low. I shall prune the pup hook and have him torn. Such a carping is unknown. 
and reckoned in my brain. I am a king of high degree. There can be none above me. To seek those sots, soldiers I shall send, whilst owlets hoots and robbers steal. Bands shall bleed under cradles bend. Let no bone be left unbeat till that beggar boy bleeds by beasts bay. <laughs> Fools, of course, king with a crown. My mighty whore, he shall never throw down. I shall slay these churls. Though mothers squeal, their knavish bands, I shall drown. With swords sharp, mothers shall carp, and of sorrow sing. Oh, oh long, long lullabies have I lost. Alas, why was my son born? Sorry, I see behind and before, at midnight, midday, and at morn, until the end of my life beckons. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm good games. My little child, my <laughs> I lulled on my lap, <laughs> forty weeks groaning, seven, seven years sorrowing. I <laughs> cry my even more. <laughs> Leave this place, you whores. All at once, or by Satan's face, I shall make you skip lightly. Now I am set as king. Might most their love for me, the whole world shall shout. Oh, there is no lord alive to me worth a toast. No king, no kaiser in this world. A boat! I heard a page make praising of pride. All princes he passes in boasting full free. He wants to be worthiest of all this world wide. But God's son does live. <laughs> there is no lord but he. Over all lords, he is king. I am death, God's messenger. Almighty God has sent me here, this braggart to break without fear for his wicked works. He is dead. I have no doubt. Amongst all this great rout, ha! therefore blow up a merry fit. Whoosh! King Herod, all shall see here, that rejoiced in pomp and pride, for all his boosts of blissful bear lies now dead upon his side. When I come, I shall not spare. For me, no creatures may hide. Now, wisest counsel amongst all the riot, hear now what I say, a tale I shall tell that troubles my stomach and gives me great doubt. Tell us now thy question, all out and out. This doubt I have, it is of Christ, born a bairn in Bedlam, it is said, and many men reckon that God's son, he is, born of a woman, a virgin maid. <laughs> and all our good days then should soon be few. And all our love and our laws that he will hew. He will be lord over heaven and hell and fetch away all our cattle. Therefore, give me some good counsel. Hmm. If he sins, he is 
no king of bliss. So tempt him thrice as he walks thy way. For mankind is but frailty and quickly falls away. To get a thousand souls in an hour, me thinks it but scorn. <laughs> Since I won Adam and Eve on the first day. <laughs> Take heed to your prince then, my audience care one, and see what masteries on earth I shall play. <laughs>